Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you all very much for taking the time to hear our company strategy and how we plan to take advantage of the battery and electrification revolution the world's currently undergoing. <clears throat> I'm a strong believer in the thesis that the global transition to cleaner energy, electrification, and carbon reduction initiatives are leading to significant incremental future demand for green metals. When you look at that demand picture next to the challenges facing new supply, it's a compelling story. In addition to favorable supply demand fundamentals, investor interest in exposure to ESG friendly opportunities is rising. We have a rigorous ESG monitoring program they were currently implementing. Global battery metal strategy is to create an inexpensive portfolio of options on green metal properties that have the potential to become mines. Typically, when we look at a project, all of the first money is going to the ground and not to the vendor of the property. The key to determine whether our theories on the property are correct the only way to do that is through exploration. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before we get into the properties, two things I'd like to highlight. Firstly, the very tight share structure. Fully diluted, we have 67 million shares outstanding and an equity value of a low $10 million. We have a million and a half dollars in cash, so we currently do not need to any, issue any equity for our current plans. Secondly, I'd like to highlight the team behind the company. Craig Roberts and Alan Matthews are both seasoned engineers who have built and operated mines. JP Paymont is recognized as one of the leading lithium geologists anywhere in the world. Cam Bell is the ex-head of project generation for Valet, one of the largest base metal companies, and has access to all kinds of projects which we continue to evaluate. Gary Brown, who's the fifth director, is the CFO of Wheaton Precious Metals, a $24 billion market cap precious metal streaming company. A serious team, I'm sure that you'll agree. My past is I'm the founder of Torex Gold, TXG on the TSX. We took a $4 million shell and turned it into a billion dollar plus gold producer. We produced nearly 500,000 ounces of gold last year. We raised over a billion dollars to do it and the mine continues to operate profitably today. Okay, so turning over to the individual assets, I'd like to give you a quick flavor of each. Obviously very happy to answer any questions. And you can see more details in the presentation um, and on the website. Sorry, I forgot I'm supposed to be clicking pages here. So that's, so the first project I wanna to speak to is the Northwest Lannister project in Ireland. The project's interesting for a couple of reasons. We identified a large package of land that had several economic grade showings of lithium. Anything over 1% is considered economic. And with the recent quadrupling of the lithium price, this economic threshold number certainly has come down. We have dozens of samples of lithium bearing rock above 1%, and we've been actively testing the property to determine the source of those showings. We recently added an additional property which had even higher showings in some cases as high as two and a half percent. We identified these showing through a historical trenching report. This matters as the material we found in the trenches is underground, shallow, but underground. And that should make it easier to find the source of the lithium. We have a contractor on standby to start, start work once we receive the exploration permit, which should be very soon. The projects are even more interesting as Gang Fang, one of the world's largest lithium companies, is our neighbor, and they are actively working on their project next door. If you look on the map to the left of your page, the top bit of the map with the red dots and there's a bit of a blue outline, that's our first property, and including the one there with the green star. The bigger the red dots, the higher the lithium sampling. If you move down a little bit, you'll see two yellow stars and a red outline that's the Gang Feng property where they continue to work. I haven't added it on this map because it's a pretty recent transaction. Just to the southeast of that Gang Feng property is the land um, we've taken and we're waiting on um, an expiration permit to get in there and retrench it. And we should expect to get that, um, that permit um, fairly soon. Um, 
Uh, so right here's just, again, you can have a look at this and just, it breaks down some of the data and whatnot that we found uh, in Ireland. Uh, next steps, we'll retrench the ground, as I mentioned. Um, the second property I want to speak to is the Lithium King uh, property in Utah. Uh, we staked this about 24 months ago. We've done a fair amount of surface work to try and understand the size of the aquifer underneath. What is interesting is that the U.S. government geological survey drill holes showed um, um, lithium showing as high as 1,200 ppm. Its rule of thumb is sort of anything above 350 ppm could be considered economic. We've applied for a drill permit to test the aquifer, and we expect to get that permit in the next month or so. The aquifer underneath is massive, and it's simply a matter of getting to it and testing it and ensuring that we get a representative sample. We've been contacted by several companies <clears throat> who have lithium extra extraction technologies. Usually out of a brine, you've got to put out a big solar and let um, nature do its trick and the water evaporates, leaving the lithium behind. If any of these extraction technologies work, we don't have to go through that process and the economics of the project would increase dramatically. We would hope to finish the drilling and testing certainly by the end of Q2 of this year. Again, I'll just, I can leave you to do that. Um, <clears throat> the third project I wanted to speak to uh, is the Sawyer Nickel Camp um, in Michigan. Uh, we have a large land package there, which we've been, we've been working on for several years. We also have applied for state leases on additional properties. Those leases are pending. We believe that the property may have the same host rock as the Eagle Mine, which is operated by Lundin Mining. The Eagle Mine is one of the, the highest grade nickel copper mines anywhere in the world. In the next couple of months, we will conduct a surface electromagnetic survey to help with any future drill targeting. targeting. Assuming that survey is successful, we will get to drilling as soon as we can. Oops, I've gone too far there. Um, the, la the second to last property I wanna to speak to um, is the Lapoli uh, Newfoundland Lithium property. Um, this is extremely an extremely early property, very, very grassroots. We stake this land as there have been a number of lithium discoveries in the region. And the government survey wor work suggests that there may also be lithium here. We are currently working to design a first stage exploration program and would expect to be in the field in the spring. The company we're using to help us do that exploration work is the same group that works for Gang Fang in Ireland just highlighting that we have um, uh, a, a very friendly working relationship with them. The last property I wanna to speak to, and that's, this is the one we've had, um, we've had the longest. Um, uh, it's a copper property in Peru of which we own 55%. We spent, we did uh, over 10,000 meters of drilling and found some pretty exciting holes. 108 meters at 0.9% copper and 218 at 0.81% copper equivalent uh, at surface. By anybody's yardstick, those are pretty exciting holes. Um, we recently um, uh, transacted with a, a large private Peruvian mining company called Minsur. They're operating a copper mine about 20 kilometers away, and we've granted them the option to buy the property. The option details you can see there on the right of page 17. Um, I'm not going to go through them in detail. You can read them. Um, they have made the first. Um, they've made the first two payments. They continue to work very actively on the property, and by all accounts, um, um, uh, by all accounts, they're uh, they're satisfied um, with the work that's been going on. So while we've agreed to sell the property uh, for nearly six billion U.S. dollars um, on a hundred percent basis, we will keep a seventy-five basis point royalty on the property. So as it looks more and more, pro as this property develops further and the probability of, of um, the property actually being mined um, uh, becomes more real, um, that royalty will certainly have a great deal of value. Um, so just to summarize, um, uh, we've got the team, the portfolio, the projects, and the plan. And we're here to try and take advantage of this um, uh, electrification revolution as best we can. Um, 
a little bit speedy. I apologize. Oh, sorry. Last thing here. I just wanted to show uh, this chart's a little out of date. The price of lithium has gone up dramatically higher than that. And just lastly, uh, this relative share price chart, we have massively, massively underperformed the other lithium companies. I'm of the belief this is because we have been very quiet in terms of communicating with the market, press releases, asset development. It's not that we haven't been working in the background. We're now ready to start to actively move these projects forward, which will necessarily increase the amount of communication we have uh, with the market. And I hope create more awareness of what we're doing. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time and your interest. And uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, let's see here. Uh, there's a couple of questions here. Um, the first one uh, from Said Wu here is asking, is uh, lithium mining very new to Ireland? Are they really supportive of that uh, part? Uh, lithium mining is certainly new to Ireland. Mining is not. Um, uh, they have a fairly regulated or sort of well-explained process on how to move things forward. Um, certainly COVID slowed sort of permit approval processes down a little bit, but I guess that's probably the case everywhere. Um, but the government is supportive of it. The lands are principally on um, uh, the national forest company lands. Um, so there's a process, but they're commercial. So there are no existing lithium mines there. As I said, Gang Feng has been working and drilling there for years and continues to do so. Great. The next question coming from Judy here is asking, do you need to raise any uh, capital in the near future? We do not. So we've got a million and a half dollars. Uh, now that will easily cover uh, planned expenses for the next year plus anyway. Um, I guess it depends on how active we get, but the plans we have in place were covered. And uh, one last question here from Donnie here. Is that with regards to the North Leinster lithium project, you mentioned you have three options on how to proceed. Uh, so which one do you prefer? Oh, okay, good question. Um, the options are as, so we spend a certain amount of money and then we earn a certain piece. Then we decide, do we like what we saw? Okay, we spend more money, we get to the next piece. And it, and it kind of goes up like that. So we have way spent materially more than what we need to for the first option. And we're currently going through design expiration plans. And I totally anticipate continuing to go through an exercise in the second option. We just haven't spent the money to get there yet, but that's the plan. Great. Uh, I think that's it for the questions. Thank you for your time here today, Michael. Thanks, Gilbert. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time.